political opinion that Britain and France used the attack on Egypt by Israel as a barefaced excuse to seize the canal, that they are now doing what they wanted to do in August and September, but were stopped from doing by public opinion at that time. What are the consequences? We have violated the Charter of the United Nations. In doing so, we have betrayed all that Great Britain has stood for in world affairs. Since the war, at least, we have supported every stand against aggression. We did so in the Korean War. We played our part, and we were absolutely right. This was a case of self-defense, collective defense, allowed under the Charter, endorsed unanimously by the Security Council of the United Nations. But today, we stand as the aggressor. What are the consequences? A deep, deep division in the Commonwealth. Only Australia and New Zealand support us. Canada and South Africa have abstained. India, Pakistan, and Ceylon are all against us. This is a very grave consequence. For I believe, as do millions of others, that this commonwealth of ours was and could have been the greatest force for peace and unity in the world. Above all, a bridge between East and West of incalculable value. That bridge is now almost destroyed. What are the consequences? I cannot but feel, sharing today's heartbreaking news from Hungary, how tragic it is that at the very moment when the whole world should be united in denouncing this flagrant, ruthless, savage aggression by Russia, against a liberty-loving people. I can't help feeling how tragic it is that we, by our criminal folly, should have lost the moral leadership of which we were once so proud. Here at home, the government policy of war with Egypt has produced terrible heart-searchings. The Archbishop of Canterbury has led a deputation of all denominations of the churches to the government. The All-Party United Nations Association has denounced the policy in strong terms. Men and women in all walks of life, of all parties and all faiths, have expressed their deep concern. Mr. Nutting, the Minister of State, whose job was specially concerned with United Nations affairs, has resigned from the government because he thinks the policy is indefensible. This is not a Labour Party matter. It touches the whole nation, all those who care for the rule of law in international affairs and wanted to see it triumph, all those who put their faith and worked for the United Nations and its charter, who accepted that it wasn't our job in all these vital issues to decide for ourselves, but to accept the decisions of the United Nations, all those who care for the good name of our country. Many of you will be saying, I am sure, well, what can we do about it? Many of you who feel just as strongly as I do how terribly wrong this whole policy has been and how terribly dangerous in the long run to our own security. I don't think there's any doubt as to what the policy should be now. We should surely, without qualification, argument or conditions, accept the resolution of the Assembly of the United Nations calling for an immediate ceasefire. Egypt has already said that she accepts this resolution. There's reason to believe that Israel will accept the ceasefire also. Why should not Britain and France do likewise? 
we should do something else. We should also give full support to the new resolution on which we abstain today for a United Nations force to police the Arab-Israel borders until a proper peace settlement has been reached. But make no mistake, this means abandoning the idea which has been at the root of this policy, the idea of trying to solve the Suez Canal problem by force. It means going back to negotiating, to negotiating a settlement on this issue. I don't believe the present Prime Minister can carry out this policy. I bear him no ill will. We have been personally quite friendly, but his policy this last week has been disastrous, and he is utterly, utterly discredited in the world. Only one thing now can save the reputation and the honour of our country. Parliament must repudiate the government's policy. The Prime Minister must resign. The Labour Party cannot alone achieve this. We are a minority in the House of Commons. So the responsibility rests with those Conservatives who, like us, are shocked and troubled by what is happening and who want a change. I appeal to them, especially. Theirs is a difficult decision, but I want to say to them that our purpose, too, in this matter, rises above party. I give them, indeed, this pledge. We undertake to support a new Prime Minister in halting the invasion of Egypt in ordering the ceasefire and complying with the decisions and recommendations of the United Nations. In that way only, believe me, can the deep divisions in the country on this matter be closed. I appeal to those who can bring this about to act now and save the reputation of our country and the future peace of the world. Good night. We could have offered to be part of the police force ourselves. This wouldn't have been intervening on one side or the other. This wouldn't have been acting on our own. This wouldn't have been an, an act of aggression. We should have been acting on behalf of the United Nations with their full authority and with world opinion behind us. But this is not what happened. Something quite different happened. Having rejected the United Nations resolution, we carried out our threats. We went to war with Egypt. Make no mistake about it. This is war. The bombing, the softening up, the attacks on radio stations, telephone exchanges, railway stations, to be followed very, very soon now by the landings and the fighting between ground forces. We're doing all this alone, except for France, opposed by the world, in defiance of the world. It is not a police action. There is no law behind it. We have taken the law into our own hands. That's the tragic situation in which we British people find ourselves tonight.